Welcome everyone to this new video. So recently uh, Miguel showed me this really awesome work of art. So as you can see it's some kind of a hexagon and it's like all these circles in it. And what's even more amazing is that actually there's like a camera in front of it. And these tiny circles are exactly re reflecting the movement of a person. Of course, this is really cool, and I actually wanted to create this as well in Grasshopper. So, let's see what we can do. So, I looked up this image, and what you can see is that the circles are going from this side to this side. So, I think we just first have to create an hexagon and then divide all these edges and connect this with lines and then intersect. So let's get to Grasshopper. So for hexagon, we can use the component uh, polygon. So you have different amount of segments you can put in. Well, default, it's already six sides. So that's quite nice. Well, the output is one polyline curve. So what we do, what we want is left uh, six individual curves. Well, you can just do, do it by the component divide curve. And there's another option inside uh, under input of the divide curve, and it's called kinks. So what this essentially does is that it splits the curve at a kink exactly as the naming says. So we set it to true. We have these points appearing at the kink. So let's input for count one. Then we see we have six points. So to create the individual curves, I'm going to shift all of the points one way and then connect them with a line component to the original points. Okay, so what we can see is that right now we have lines. If we put a panel, we see that we have uh, nicely six line components. So let's say we want to divide all of these lines with, well, let's say 12 segments. I think that's quite nice. So we have for every line, 12 segments. Okay. Um, so let's take one of the segments, one of the points on them. So what you can see right now, I try to get index zero of the list. Well, the tree structure of this list is that there are multiple lists in lists. So if we just make it a little bit easier to see, we have one list, then another list. And what I want to do right now, what I'm doing right now is selecting the first entry of every list. And that results in this one. What we want right now is to select every point on the first curve or you can do this with a component called flip matrix that it actually flips off the points so if i select the first entry of all of this of all of these lists then you can see i created i selected all of the points on the curve so let's create a slider from 0 to 5, which you can do by 0 dot dot 5. As you can see, right now I have a slider from 0 to 5. All right. Okay, I can just copy this, of course. And let's select, well, 1, 2, let's select the, the third 
line. Now we have all the points. And then we can just... Ah, okay. So what we see is actually that by creating these lines, the first entry of this point is here. And the first entry of this point is here. So we have to reverse the list. We, luckily we have a component called reverse list. So if we try to do that, okay, so it doesn't work. And that's because the structure of this list, as you can see, we have list in lists again, and all, every list has just one item. So actually reversing it doesn't matter. But if we flatten this list, and of course we have to also flatten this list, then it can reverse the list. Okay. Let's copy and paste these. And, well, let's see if we can just select this one. And, well, the last one. It looks good. Let's copy and paste again. Let's see if we can, well, I think this one is good, but let's select the second one. Okay, that is nice. And then the final one, so the second and one back. Okay. So right now we have all of the line components, as you can see. That's nice. Let's try to intersect them. So on the intersect tab, we have on the physical, we have curve, curve. So it's a curve, curve intersect. So we want to intersect these with these. So let's input it, hold shift. And here again, hold shift. Well, what you can see is that we actually have, do not have the desired result right now. We have only one intersect for each curve. What of course we want to do is have each of this curve, each curve is intersected by all of these curves. And that we can do just by grafting one of the inputs. Good. Now, right now we have already well, for quite a nice arrangement of points. Let's create the circles. Um, I think circle CNR is the best for this. Well, we have all of the points as center. Okay, well, that's a bit too much. Let's flatten this as well. That's probably better as a data structure. Let's see if we can have a radius of, one, of 0 0.15. Okay, let's do a little bit of manual adjustments, right, to make it nice. Okay. Uh, probably 0 point, 0 0.12 is pretty good. Yeah, that's quite nice. Okay. So I think f for right now we have basically, let's hide most of this. So we can have a better look. Okay. Well, I think we are quite close right now. So that's nice. Um, but what you can also see on this picture is actually that it's, of course, tilted. Right? There's like an angle in it. So I think we have to rotate the, the polygon. That's the best at the beginning. So there's a plane. So we have to have a rotated plane. So from this point on, we're going to use X, Y plane. That's just where it originally is. I'm just going to rotate it. Um, rotate this. Okay, so rotate geometry. Well, we want to rotate this plane. Let's have a look. Probably 45 degrees is nice. 
Um, and I think it's important to see that you select this as degrees. That's easier as input. And we want to rotate it on the YZ plane. YZ plane. Okay. So right now we have this. Well, that looks quite good. So let's just input this here. Well, as you can see, the polygon is nicely turned, but all the circles are still on the XY plane. So let's also create them on the same plane. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, so we have this plane and we're going to use that in the normal. Yeah, that looks nice. That looks very nice. Okay, well, of course, what you can do right now with the circles is, for example, create a boundary service between all of them. That's rather easy. It does take a little bit of calculation, but we have quite a nice, quite a nice service. Um, Okay, so there are actually multiple things we can also do with this. For example, that we, this is the outer edge. What we can also do is create a frame around it. So this, this frame around it. I think that would be quite nice to make. So for this, as you can see, this is like exactly at the center of the circle. So let's let's see if we can just make the radius a bit bigger of this one. So it's three, so probably something like this. Let's experiment a little bit with it. 3.14, okay. Well, that's quite nice. It's um, just at the edge. And what we also see is that we have to, the best way to create a frame is of course that it has a little bit of height in the Z direction. So let's move up the plane with a Z value. Let's say, uh, let's take three. Um, let's put this one here. And this one here. Okay. Well, I moved up the plane a bit. We have this one. And now we can just project. We can just project it on, let's say, the ground level. And that's in this case an XY plane. Well, you can see that it's nicely projected. So we have this one and we have this one. And the component loft, you can create a surface between these two elements. Look at that. Now we created our base. And of course, if we changing this, it can just, it will transform exactly as it should. So that this works beautifully. Well, if we connect this boundary service again, which is a little bit slow because of the amount of circles again, but well, then we see that we have a very good result. So I'm happy with this. So thank you for just going, going along with this uh, tutorial and I will see you in the next one. Bye.